On the 3rd of February 1946 in Riga, a horrific and barbaric war criminal was taken to the gallows in front of a crowd of 4,000 people for his execution. Inside of Victory Square, the civilians looked on as Friedrich Jekan, a Nazi who had been responsible for the slaughter of thousands of people, had the noose secured around his neck. There were, at the end of the Second World War, a number of commanders of the Einsatzgruppe, the Nazi death squads, who were brought to trial and ultimately dispatched by executioners for the horrific evil and slaughter of thousands of innocent people. Many of these were said to have been the most shocking Nazis, who ruthlessly carried out the actions of the SS and senior ranking members of the Nazi party, and because of this, they were some of the most hated by the people who lived inside of occupied lands. The Einsatzgruppe caused complete chaos, but what is the story of the execution of Friedrich Jekalm? As always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Friedrich Jekalm was born in February 1895, and not much is known about his early life. But he was involved in the First World War, and would also rise to the rank of an officer, before the conflict ended with the German defeat. Following the First World War, there was a difficult time emerging inside of Germany, as they were forced to undergo years of struggle and issues, especially following the Wall Street crash, which pushed many Germans towards poverty and starvation. But because of this, a number of political parties, which were radical, emerged, such as the Nazi Party. In the post-war Germany, Jekyll worked as an engineer before he joined officially the Nazis in 1929, and he then two years later became a member of the SS. He served as an officer, and eventually also was an elected member of the Reichstag, but Jekyll rose to the rank of an Obergruppeführer in the SS. Jekyll was a man who was known for his toughness and barbaric side, and he was someone who would ruthlessly want to stamp the Nazis' authority on Germany, and he even at times murdered the political opponents of the Nazis. He was involved in the Rieserberg murders, which resulted in the slaughter of 11 communists. However, during the Second World War, this barbaric Nazi would be thrust into the deadliest conflict in history, and he would become an even more terrible criminal. He was drafted into the Waffen-SS, and he served as an officer inside of Regiment 2 of the Death's Head Division, and was then transferred by Heinrich Himmler, to become a higher SS and police leader on the Eastern Front in the Soviet Union. But when he served in this senior position, Friedrich Jekyll oversaw the executions and slaughter of thousands of innocent people. He was in control of all of the SS Einsatzgruppe divisions in his district, and the operations they got involved in, carrying out scores of massacres. The Einsatzgruppe were the executioners and death squads who followed the advances of the German military, they would round up civilians in terrible mass killings. They would enter a village and settlement, and then order the civilians to come out. They were then told to dig large pits in concealed areas or on the edge of the settlements. Following this in small groups, civilians and victims would be led into the pits and then executed. The true crimes of these killers still lie today under the earth, and many of these massacres are still undiscovered. But Yekan continued to oversee the actions of the Einsatzgruppe, and the group were responsible for the slaughter of around 2 million people. But within the Soviet Union, the killing squads were dispatched to kill specifically those being persecuted by the Nazis, and also those related to communism or the Communist Party. With this, huge acts of slaughter continued, and Yekel oversaw large massacres, and word began to spread about the horrific slaughter which was taking place all across the Soviet Union. Many people tried to flee, but specific instruction was given to commanders such as Yekan to continue the executions at all cost. Within weeks of Operation Barbarossa being launched, huge pogroms were launched, which led to the deaths of 10,000 people, and Yekan developed a system of mass killing, in which he believed was the most efficient way, and it was known as the Yekan system. This process was as followed. The SD would firstly force people out of their homes, and then they would sort through those who were scheduled for execution, sorting people into lines of 500 to 1,000 people. Then after this, the victims were taken to the execution site. The order police led these columns of people to the massacre pits, and at least three pits would be dug in advance. The victims, when they arrived at their site of death, would be forced to take off their clothes, and also valuables, which were placed in different piles for sorting. They were then forced to run past many guards, being driven into the pits before they were ordered to lie down on top of the bodies of previously executed victims. 
Then the executioners would fire into the victims, and they even used Russian guns to hide their crimes and to save on the cost of bullets. And these murderers then walked inside of the trenches, performing further coup de gras gunshots if someone had somehow survived. If someone did survive, they could even be buried alive under the bodies of many more. One of the most horrific acts that Friedrich Yekan was involved in was the Rumbula Massacre, which occurred between the 30th of November 1941 and the 8th of December. Close to Riga, in the Rumbula Forest, around 25,000 Jews were slaughtered by the Einsatzgruppe A, and there was a lot of planning that went into this attack. Yekhelm himself had researched different areas in the region to carry out the large-scale killings, and he employed his own bodyguards to carry out the attack. The executioners fired upon the victims from the edge of the pits, and in larger ones, they walked amongst the dead, administering gunshots. Yekhelm was noted to have been stood overseeing proceedings at the top, and he gave the instructions to his executioners. On the first day, 13,000 people had been shot. Many were claimed to have been half dead when they were shot, but further execution occurred. He also oversaw the Babi Yar massacre, in which thousands more were slaughtered. It was said of this that, although only approximately 5,000 to 6,000 Jews had been expected at first, more than 30,000 arrived, who until the very moment of their execution, still believed in resettlement, thanks to a very clever organisation. Friedrich Yekhelm had become one of the SS's most brutal and ruthless commanders, and he was responsible for dozens of thousands of civilian deaths. He was not fighting armed enemy combatants with this, but instead slaughtering unarmed civilians. As the Second World War came to an end, he continued to rampage throughout different lands, but he was captured by the Red Army, close to Halba in Germany, on the 28th of April 1945. He was identified and was in 1946 taken to trial in Riga, close to where he committed scores of atrocities. Yekhelm was brought alongside seven others and it was clear to the prosecution what he had done. But throughout his trial it was revealed that he was present at most of the large-scale shootings and massacres and he even shot people himself with his weapons. Further slaughter stories came out and it was said he was responsible for at least 100,000 people's deaths and executions. Friedrich Jekhelm tried to say he was just following orders given to him by Heinrich Himmler, however he was sentenced to death. On the 3rd of February 1946, the barbaric Einsatzgruppe commander was taken from his prison cell to Victory Square in Riga, alongside other defendants who had been condemned to death. There was a large crowd that day that had gathered to witness the executions of those senior German officers who had caused so much death and destruction. Stalin ordered that many of these war criminals should be executed in front of large crowds of Soviet people, as he wanted to make sure his justice was being seen. But Friedrich Yekhelm was brought to the specially built gallows, and he was led up to the noose where he was to be hanged. He was ordered to stand on the back of a truck, which was reversed under the gallows, and an executioner then secured the noose around his neck. The death sentence was read out, and then following this, the truck drove off, and the rope around Yekhelm's neck snapped taut, and with this he was left hanging on the gallows. He was a ruthless and barbaric executioner and leader of death squads, but Friedrich Yekhelm paid for his crimes with his life in public, in front of a crowd of around 4,000. He was a man who oversaw the horrific slaughter of the Einsatzgruppe, and his victims would tell the courtroom at his trial about his actions and the work of his men. One particular harrowing quote from a victim told of his evil, and a survivor of the Rumbula massacre said, A mountain of footwear was pressing down on me. My body was numb from cold and immobility. However, I was fully conscious. The snow under me had melted from the heat of my body. Quiet for a while. Then from the direction, a child's cry, Mama, 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 a few shots, quiet, killed. It was Friedrich Jakaun who led this sort of slaughter. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.